Welcome back everyone to some more World of Tanks. In this video we're going to go over the new crew perk system uh, that was announced yesterday, I think, by Wargaming. Kind of like Crew 2.0, the 2024 version, I guess, after last year's awful Crew 2.0 um, announcement. It didn't really go as they had hoped, I guess. Hopefully this year they learned from what people actually want. And yeah. Let's check out first the video, then we'll go over the article and see what this new crew perk system is. I will be pausing from time to time. Um, so if you want to watch the full video without the bafish interrupting you every few seconds, I will leave a link to the video to the article in the description down below. But without further ado, let's do this. Let's watch the video. We are starting to test large-scale improvements to crew perks. Okay. This is an early test designed to check that we're moving in the right direction. That's all we We skip. haven't created a new crew system, but rather developed the existing one. Let's call it a serious evolution. There are many new features, but it's easier to figure everything out than you might expect. So let's get to it. Uh, yes, indeed. Now, each crew member has just six slots for main perks. Okay. Zero perks also come under this limit. So, uh, yeah, just look at the amounts of, of XP you need over here. So, instead of the 7, 8, uh, maybe even more crew skills that you needed that cost you millions and millions, if not billions, of, of XP, the most you will need is 6.7 million um, XP to get a 6 perk crew, which is nice if you have 0 perks. Once again, it cuts off those two final, um, I don't know, steps levels perks whatever so instead of actually cutting the first two which is the 210,000 420,000 um it's actually going to be very cheap if you have a zero perk crew to get it to max perk level apparently so this is this is this is really good this is really really good for zero perk crews in my opinion um well, the key though. benefit of zero perks remains yes they very do not good. raise the price of experience for subsequent ones Directives will also not help get around the limits, since they can't give the effect of a seventh perk if only six have been trained. That said, they can always strengthen already trained ones. There is In good case, that's good as well. Um, you could use directives to actually get another skill um, in the previous Crew 2.0, if I'm not mistaken, so... Glad to see that they removed that as well. Members who fulfill several roles at once. Okay. It is a bonus perk system. I like if bonus. If a crew member has a secondary qualification, Apologies. it will be trained alongside the major one. It has just three perks. To fully train a perk for an additional qualification, you need to train two perks for the major one. Bonus perks okay. do not increase the total training time, no matter how many there are. So basically, every two perks you get on your uh, main. Role, main qualification, I guess you get one extra. It's like the Manticore's commander, as you can see, is also uh, the gunner and the radio operator. That means that in the current version, you could have like 18 different skills or something ridiculous like that um, on your Manticore commander. So it's nice to see that they're actually reducing it. You'll actually need only six skills. Because um, the extra skills, right, the other qualifications are bonuses, like they said. So instead of having to train 12 skills or 18 skills like you currently need, you'll just have to train 6. And you will get 12 out of this. So it's 2 plus 2, 4, 3, basically, um, on the Manticore. But for every other vehicle where they have maybe just one other qualification, it's going to be 2 perks that you train. And then you get one extra bonus perk for the other um, secondary qualification for free, basically. So you'll be able to get Brothers in Arms and Concealment at first, and then you can choose one of the Gunner's perks uh, for free. Then you can go like they did with the Recon and Repair, and you'll get a second Gunner perk. In Manticore specifically, you'll get a Radio Operator perk as well for every two perks. So, yeah, you can just look at it as two perks, one for free, if it's a secondary uh, role of the crew member, basically, which is nice. So, everyone will just have to train six skills, six perks. There will be no exception from what I'm seeing right now. Um, you will need seven, you will need eight, nine, ten, eleven, eighteen skill crews. Max you can have is six with bonus perks that you get for free. Nice. 
this is this is like very streamlined, very uh, easy to understand, I guess. So, so this is nice. Let's let's keep on going. Now, it's looking good. Qualification has a choice oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! What is all this? I didn't know most of these skills. And six individual perks. You will have plenty to choose from because we've added fifteen new ones. Okay, um, we'll go over all of those in the article later. They show them for like each crew member in a better way, closer, because Batfish is pretty blind, so I can't really read this. <laughs> but um, it is split, as you can see, into group perks, which you can train on everyone. I guess all of your crew members will be able to train Brothers in Arms Repairs and Concealment, and then you can add from specific, like, uh, role-specific skills, so the commander has Recon, Emergency, Mentor, then you have Gunners who have Snapshot, Dead Eye, Designated Target, you know, all of these lovely skills that will go over soon TM into the article, um, which is looking nice. So you, I guess you can get three group perks and then three of the other ones, or just take all six of the other ones without the group perks, but I personally love Brothers in Arms, I love Repairs. Uh, but I guess that means that heavies can actually go with only, like, Brothers in Arms repairs with the group perks, and then have more of the specialized perks over here, which is nice. I guess that is actually going to add some more variety to the way people play the game, which I definitely don't mind. Did 15 new ones. For instance, practicality for a commander reduces cooldown time. This is consumable cooldown time by 7.5%. This might be decent on heavies when you get stunned too much, right? To help with the uh, the small first aid kit to come consumables. back sooner. The old perks have been rebalanced. Some have become more useful. For example, sound detection. Firefighting is now an individual radio operator perk, meaning you okay. don't need to train the whole crew in it. So, yeah, instead of having it as part of the group perks, they made firefighting as a radio operator only perk, which is, once again, it's really good for heavies. They don't need the firefighting, especially Russian heavies, right? They do get certain fire quite often. It's just going to be one skill, and then you have the firefighting, which is lovely. Um, is it really lovely, though, when the meta of the game is currently at heavies only-ish? I don't know. I don't know, but I guess this is where uh, personal preference comes into play. Some perks have remained unchanged. In okay. total, each crew member only has nine perks to choose from and just six slots for their major qualification. Yeah, so like I said earlier, you have the three group perks, which are for everyone. Then you have the other six specialized um, role-specific perks over here. And you can choose six out of those nine. Group perks count as part of the six. In case anyone was wondering, you can't go... Group perks, three, and then specialized perks, six. That is nine in total. You can't have that. Um, you can choose mix and match between group and specialized perks over here for a total of six. That's basically it. Which ones to train and which ones not to is up to you. Indeed. All perks of duplicated qualifications now only work fully when each group member has them. Intuition was it is like that right now, right? So if if you have intuition 100% on one crew member, you're gonna have 50% <laughs> efficiency um, of intuition. So like the FE45, for example, has two loaders, and I needed to have 100% on both loaders to have 100% um, intuition. I think it's only like safe storage and adrenaline rush that don't work that way. That if you have one with 100%, then it's 100% for the vehicle. Correct me if I'm wrong here, um, but I, I think intuition is currently the same, if I'm not mistaken. But I guess that just means that they're going to do it for safe storage and adrenaline rush as well. Okay. Let's say you have two loaders and you've trained a perk for one of them. It will only work at 50% efficiency. This is to balance vehicles with small and large crews. It does make sense. After you've trained all six main perks, the aces will be able to train your cadets. Half of the base okay. experience your six perk tankers earn will be counted toward post progression. Get 100,000 XP and you will receive a universal training guide that will help you train new crews. This is actually really good. I was actually thinking so. If you get six perks, why would you keep on playing the vehicle, right? There's, there's basically no reason 
um, unless you really like the vehicle. But you actually get a universal guide. It's not a country specific. It means that you can put on any tank and you get 100,000 um, crew XP, which is, which is really nice. I mean, considering the fact that they reduce the amount that you need um, from 8, 9, 10 crew skills that were millions and millions of XP down to only um, 6. And then you need, I think, for the last level, 6 million or something XP. I think this is really, really good. And uh, yeah, even if you do have six crew, six skill crews, you'll still have a reason to play the vehicle because that will help you train other crews of other vehicles and of other nations as well because it's a universal guide. So this is really, really nice once again in my During opinion. During the test and for some time after the update's release, resetting perks will be free. If you want to reset the perks of many crew members at once, you can use the new buttons in the barracks. Yes! The yes! The first one resets the perks of all your crew members, and the second one automatically fills empty perk slots. I don't to like the second one. To set crew members to your playstyle, it's best to reassign perks manually for the crews of your favourite vehicles. Like resetting, you can just reset and then choose from everything, right? So you have reset perks for everyone? Yes, this is, this is just... Ah, delightful. This is the quality of life stuff that games need. Thank you very much. So instead of me having to go through all of my vehicles, basically, and pressing retrain, 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 reset everything, um, there's one button, and it seems like there's going to be a 30-day grace period, I guess, where you can just switch around all of the new perks, test them out once it is live. This is, this is just lovely. Absolutely delightful stuff. I am really happy with what I'm seeing so far. Set crew members to your playstyle. It's best to reassign perks manually for you the crews of your that. favorite vehicles. Zero perks can now also be reset. You can choose several at once in the perk selection window. This is delightful. To portal, go to the news article about the updated system and sign up for testing. Together, we can make sure that the updated system works well and is correctly configured and balanced before we move on to common testing. Feel free to experiment and leave feedback. You should always leave feedback. Good luck on the battlefields. I push edit, sir. Ha. Huh. Um, okay, so from what I'm seeing so far from this video, it took everything I hated about the previous uh, Crew 2.0 that they had last year. And they just fixed it, basically. They made it so much better. So much better than it was. Um, yeah. It's just... Like, if, if you already make such a huge change, right, to the crew, which is very important inside the game, do it right. And I think this is right, actually. Like, I'm not seeing anything wrong. Um, I will need to go through all of the skills, all of the perks, the new ones, uh, just to check that there aren't any game-breaking ones over there. But overall, I think this is a really good overhaul of the crew system. But yeah, I guess we should just check out uh, the article real quick and see if it is actually as good as it looks. There we go, new crew perk system, try it out, I shall, thank you. Uh, commanders, vehicle crews are one of the base mechanics of World of Tanks, and as such, they need to be refined and refreshed. Yes, I agree with that. They do need a bit of uh, changing. How much, though? Gonna have to wait and see. Because of the mechanics' importance, this must be done with great care. Yes. Which is why we invite you to participate in an early test of the new crew perk system. Uh, that will take place from June 10th through June 20th on a separate game server. Basically, um, the new sandbox server. Uh, sign up straight away so you can get familiar with the new system's key features, new perks like practicality, armorer, engineer, and ammo tuning. To name a few, we're, we're going to have to go and check those out. Um, a number of reviewed classic perks, firefighting, mentor, adrenaline rush, and more. Bonus perks, which I think are really good. For crew members with extra qualifications, so basically like if, if your commander is also a radio operator, driver, loader, whatever. You get some bonus perks that will be uh, role-specific with the extra roles that the commander has. Maximum number of perks capped at 6. Compensation for overqualified crews. Need to see what that compensation is. Partially reworked crew directives. Okay, that means that you can't have 
a directive of a skill you didn't train, I believe. But yeah, we saw the video just a second ago, so let's, let's explore the new perks. Familiarize yourselves with the new highlighted perks below. Revised and unmodified perks are listed too. Okay, so if it's white, it is a new perk. If it is orange, it is a reworked perk. And I guess if it's something else or nothing, <laughs> um, it's, it's the same as it was before. So let's start recon was reworked as you can see it is orange next so it increases view range by two percent reduces the penalty to damaged observation device by 20 percent um okay i don't think it had the penalty to damaged observation devices thing before so i guess that is what they added to the recon uh this is a commander skill by the way these are all commander skills I'm gonna go one by one starting with the commander as usual the group perks are the same for everyone uh, brothers in arms the same as it is right now, increases crew efficiency by 5%. Uh, concealment, when fully trained, increases vehicle, con vehicle concealment by 80%, and repairs will increase your repair speed by 80% as well. So these are all the same. These are the group perks, and yeah, I'm going to go for the individual role perks now. So the second one is emergency, which is a new perk, as you can see with the white outline over here. Um, increases the crew efficiency bonus by 7.5% for 15 seconds after taking enemy damage. Effect does not stack up. Um, it does not stack up. But how does how does the timing work? Like if I get hit, and then 10 seconds later I get hit again, does it reset it back to 15, or is it still five? This is, this is, like, we need a bit more info over here, Wargaming. It does not stack up. I mean, that is probably, like, if you get hit twice, it's not 15%, obviously. But my questions are with the times, right? Because with a stun, you do have some uh, disparity and stuff. Uh, so this, this needs to be a bit more clear. But this is a really good one. I mean, 7.5% crew efficiency bonus. It's kind of like a, a brothers in arms and a half. <laughs> <laughs> for 15 seconds after taking damage. Uh, so imagine being in a mouse, right? You always take damage with a mouse, but you have so much HP, and you're just going to be better at everything for most of the battle, I guess. Uh, depends on how the, the timing stacks up. Uh, Mentor is the third one, which is a reworked perk. Mentor was the one with the extra XP. Increased the amount of XP earned by 20% for all crew members, so that's the same. Um, enables the commander to replace knocked out members with 65% effectiveness. So they basically combined Mentor with uh, Jack of all trades, if I'm not mistaken, and made it one skill. Which is understandable. I never really took Mentor or Jack of all trades on my, um, on my crew members. But if you combine them, it makes this actually very nice indeed. Especially for new players who are trying to grind more skills, you can start with a Mentor on your commander, which will help with the XP earned for all crew members, and then once you get to that 6 skill, you can switch back from the mentor, right? You will get some uh, crew skill reset books from time to time that you can use, so that is something you can do if you want to increase your new crews. Okay, next up we have coordination. I'm kind of in the way, so let's, let's try and find a... there we go. Um, increases aiming speed by 12.5%. For 15 seconds after you spot an enemy vehicle. Okay. Um, this, is, this is not very useful on a lot of vehicles, because most vehicles that have high aiming times are not vehicles that spot others. So this might be good for, let's say, autoloaders, I guess. Like if you rush forwards with your TVP and you're, you're spotting everyone, you might be able to shoot them more easily. But this is this is not as good as some of the others, I guess. Very situational. Can be nice, like I said, maybe on some autoloaders, maybe on some shonky mediums that have those big guns. But overall, I don't know. Like I'd, I'd much rather have the other things, probably. Um, sound detection, which has been reworked as well. Issues an alert about enemy SPG fire with a 0.1 second delay identifies the direction of the shot, so when the artillery is firing towards you, 
It gives you kind of an alarm of sorts, shows you where the artillery is firing from and that you are being targeted. And it also decreases the negative effect of stunning by 10%. So they added that, bef they didn't have the stunning um, help over here before, which is nice, I guess, heavy. Yes, do it, heavy tanks, do it now. We'll help you with the stuns that you will be getting basically all the time. So it feels like the mouse is going to be very happy after this update. Uh, okay, final one is Practicality. This is a new perk, which decreases consumable cooldown time by 7.5%. This can be good, uh, but I think Practicality and Coordination are kind of situational. Practicality, once again, can be really good on heavies. If you want to use the first aid kit once you get stunned, um, if it's a vehicle that has a huge capola and your commander dies very often, or maybe your driver gets hit too often, maybe it's a vehicle that has a weak engine, weak ammo rack, this can be good on those. Uh, which, it's, it's decent, it's a pretty decent skill. So those are the commander skills. Um, I don't think there's anything game-breaking in this one, except for maybe emergency. You're going to have to see how emergency stacks up in terms of time. Like if it's 15 seconds and it resets every time you take damage, then I think this one might be a bit too good. Like Adding 7.5% crew efficiency is, is a bit crazy. It is a bit crazy. Um, so we're going to need more information about this one, but let's move on to the gunner. Snapshot the same as it was before, you can see there's no uh, colored outline. Deadeye, one that I really enjoy on autoloaders, increases the chance of critically damaging enemy vehicle modules and injuring enemy crew members with all type of shells by 3%. Okay, um, before it didn't have HE with it. So yes, even new HE players can now enjoy uh, Deadeye, I guess. Designated target wasn't changed. Wait, wait, what? They say it they say wasn't changed, but it did. It's, it's a new perk, basically. Increases the time before an enemy vehicle is no longer visible. That is what it was before. Um, inside the gunner's viewing area by two seconds. Enables to identify damaged modules with a 0.5 second delay. That is Eagle Eye. If I'm not mistaken. So I think it should have had like the, the orange outline, like the Deadeye one. Right, Deadeye got the addition of um, HE rounds being used in the, uh, the stuff. You weren't able to do the extra module and crew damage with HE before. And Designated Target didn't have Eagle Eye combined with it. So this is, this is kind of weird. Um, so I guess they need to update the article a bit. But yeah. They combine designated target with Eagle Eye, apparently. So this is a very powerful skill. I love Eagle Eye. Once again, especially on the uh, big guns, especially on the autoloaders and fast... Basically on everything, right? If you have a fast-firing gun and you have Eagle Eye, you can try and hit all sorts of areas to see what hits modules inside the vehicle and then hit that area again and again and again to set vehicles on fire, uh, to ammo rack them, maybe hit crew members again and again. So this is going to be a huge one, actually, the designated target. Definitely recommend taking that one if it stays the same. Uh, concentration, this is actually a new perk. Decreases the gun dispersion of a stationary vehicle by 3.5%. Effect starts 3 seconds after the vehicle stops. So you get an extra small <laughs> aiming device, I guess, um, if you sit still. This is probably something good for big chunky boy guns, FE-40-5s, uh, maybe Ag Panzer E-100s, derp guns of all sorts that do have very long aim times as well. I think that could be good on those, but nothing game-breaking in my opinion. Um, also, you can make your SDF-103B and Grill-15 super accurate with this, so that is nice. Quick aiming improves aiming time by 2.5%. So this is kind of like a, a base. A base buff to your aiming time, which is nice. I mean, some vehicles do need that. Um, once again, I don't think it's anything game breaking, so it is good. Armorer, we already had armorer before, but it was 
uh, very different than what it is now. Reduces the range of potential damage and potential penetration to plus minus 20%. Decreases gun dispersion by 1.5%. This is kind of like a good and bad thing, I guess. Because it makes RNG less RNG, right? RNG right now is plus minus uh, 25% and not 20 like in this one. So let's say you have a 100 damage gun. That means that currently the max damage you can do is 125. Uh, the minimum damage is 75, right? 25% up and down. But with this perk, it'll actually go to 20%. So instead of having 125 damage as the max, it'll be 120. Instead of having 75 as the minimum, it'll be 80. So it's, it's like, it's good if you want to reduce the RNG inside the game. Personally, I love those high rolls too much to use it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the, the the better the gun dispersion is very tempting, I must say. Very tempting. So this is a good one for people who wanted RNG to be less of a factor. You can now actually reduce RNG with perks, I guess. Uh, but these, was, these were the gunner uh, skills. Let's move on to the driver. Clutch braking is the same. Smooth ride is the same. I need to read, like, the, we're not going to trust that anymore, right? After trolling us a bit. But these are the same. Off-road driving reduces speed loss on moderately soft terrain by 5%, and makes speed loss on soft terrain equal to 100% of the resulting value. Um, okay, that basically means that you'll be driving on soft terrain as much as you're driving on medium terrain, if I'm not mistaken. Which is huge. Like all of the vehicles that have bad terrain resistances. This this is actually a really good skill for those. Really good skill. I mean if you want to go for your IS7 RAM build, <laughs> it has just been buffed. Just been buffed. Um but yeah, this is only for vehicles that have bad terrain resistances. So yeah. I think this is a good one. I think this is a good one as well. Reliable Placement, this is a new perk. Increases HE shells damage absorption by 7.5%. Decreases damage received from falling by 30%. Um, I guess if you feel like you're being derped too much, or if you don't know how to drive like, like a very specific person who falls off cliffs, this might be for you. But I, I don't really see this one being effective at all. Okay, maybe on heavies, like, it will help with artillery, right? Uh, but yeah, nothing too special. Controlled impact is changed as well. As you can see, it is orange, increases ramming damage to enemy vehicles by 20%. You guys have that on your IE7 as well. Reduces ramming damage to your vehicle by 25%. And your suspension by 50%. I don't believe the suspension was part of uh, the skill right now. So they also made your suspension tougher with controlled impact, which is nice. Um, was it really needed? I, I'm not sure. I don't really think the suspension bonus is needed over here. But we're going to have to wait and test it out, right? That's it. That's why it's a test server, basically. New perk, Engineer. Increase the top forward and reverse speed of your vehicle by 1 km an hour. Uh, reduce penalty to the damaged engine by 20%. This can be good in vehicles, let's say, like the, uh, the SDRV vehicles, right? Those um, Swedish tank destroyers where even one kilometer is a big boost percentage-wise. It's nothing too special. Penalty da damaged engine, if you have a vehicle that gets its engine damaged um, often, maybe you like to use those removed speed governors on some of your Russian vehicles, then this can be good as well. But nothing too special, nothing game-breaking once again, so really good job with these as well. Moving on to the loader, Adrenaline Rush decreases gun loading time by 5% if your vehicle has under 25% of its hit points. Okay. Um, so this was changed. This was reduced, right? The gun loading time at the moment is a 10% boost, but that's only if your vehicle has under 10% of its hit points. So they actually reduced it a bit, made it a little less effective. Um, by decreasing the gun loading time by 5%, but they also made it easier to get to the requirements by increasing it from 10% of your HP to 25. 
I think this is a good change. I think um, Adrenaline Rush is currently not very effective. It is okay situationally, but this is going to make it a lot better. Um, save Stowage. Increase Anorak durability by 25%. Okay. If you have a bad Amorak, use Save Stowage. That's basically it. Intuition stays the same. Uh, perfect Charge. Okay, that is a new... That is a new perk. Increases shell velocity by 10%. Okay. Uh, I mean, this this can be really good. This can be very trolly. Imagine, imagine suddenly having those derpy shells flying at you a bit more quickly. Um, yes, Caliban. Yes, please and thank you. Sniping Caliban just became better. Okay, new perk. Close combat decreases gun loading time by 2.5% at distances of 50 meters or less from enemy vehicle. Heavy tanks, um, Polish tank destroyers especially. When you fight at close ranges, this can be really good for those. I like this. I actually do like this. Um, I do like to fight at close ranges most of the time. So this is definitely a perk that is good for me. But, I mean, it feels like a lot of those are good for heavies, right? It feels like they're trying to push the heavy tank meta even more. And I'm not sure what to think about that. Like, the skill itself is nice. Is it what we needed, though? I'm not sure. Um, increases minimum potential damage and minimum potential penetration by 2%. Okay. Um, I don't like this one. This is this is basically making RNG better for you. I liked it when it was um, on the gunner, right? When it's both the minimum and the maximum, then it gives you another boost, like the, the gun dispersion. But this is basically just uh, your better type of skill. I find it kind of boring if it was... 2% plus minus and then give us something else, I don't know. Uh, in addition, I think that could be better. But this just means that the minimum potential damage that you're going to do, like let's take the 100 damage once again, if your average damage, damage is 100, so instead of 75 uh, damage as the mineral, it's going to be 77, right? 2%. Unless it's unless it's two percent of the RNG, and then it's a bit more difficult to calculate. But I think it's just two percent, and that means that um, instead of seventy-five, it'll be seventy-seven. Um, if you like, one thousand damage gun, that means that instead of seven hundred and fifty minimum roll, you'll have seven hundred and seventy. Not sure about this one. This is the first one that I don't really like. Um, but yeah, that's that's just basically it. You're getting a buff to your RNG instead of plus minus 25. It's going to be plus 25 minus uh, 23. So, radio operator. Situational awareness stays the same. Side by side, a new perk increases the crew efficiency bonus by 2.5%. Distances of 50 meters or less from an allied vehicle of the same type. So it's not for every type, it's only of the same type. I guess this is really good for platoon mates. Uh, people who love playing with others in platoons. So let's say you take your mediums together, bunching them up, rushing the mines hill together, um, or fighting as a group of heavies in one hull down position. This is good for you. If you don't really play in platoons, or you don't really go around with your allies too much, this is definitely not for you. Uh, jamming. A new perk decreases the time your vehicle remains spotted by the enemy by 1%, 1%, 1 second, actually. Very good for light tanks, not very useful for anything else, maybe mediums, sneaky mediums as well. Um, I don't think it's anything bad, it's decent for specific vehicles. I'll take it, I'll take it. I decrease the time to determine whether your vehicle has been spotted by the enemy by 0.5 seconds. So this basically means that your sixth sense, the thing that pops off whenever you're spotted, um, is going to happen in 2.5 seconds instead of 3 seconds, which it currently is. So, if you do like to know when you're spotted with Sixth Sense, this can be a good skill for you. Next up is Radio Expert, a new perk, which increases the crew efficiency bonus by 2.5% if the amount of damage you assist exceeds your vehicle's initial hit points. So, it seems like uh, the Radio Operator 
skills are better for light tanks, right? Jamming is good for light tanks, signal interception is good for light tanks, uh, radio expert is good for light tanks. So I don't mind those. Definitely don't mind those if you just sit in a bush and you get, let's say with a manticore, you get that 1400 spotting damage at the start of the battle. For the rest of the battle, you have a boost of 2.5% in crew efficiency, which is nice. And the last skill is firefighting, which we saw earlier. Firefighting is what we currently have, but it moved to a radio operator only skill instead of being a group perk. Overall, like, except for the ammo tuning, which I don't really like, and we need some more info about emergency, I think these are great changes. I think these are really good skills. It gives you more choice, right? There's more variety. Um, some people will take side by side when fighting in a platoon. Some will take, I don't know, radio expert because they like light tanks. I feel it might increase uh, the variety inside the game, which is always, always good. And nothing seems broken, except for maybe the ammo tuning, like I said. Hopefully that's going to be changed a bit. Um, yeah, really good job. Really good job so far from what I'm seeing. Let's continue, though. The new perk system, the basics. Um, the maximum number of perks a crew member can train for their major qualification is six. Like we saw earlier, you can't train more than six skills. For each major qualification, you can choose from six individual perks and three group perks. So, if you have um, more than uh, three group perks, that, that is the, it's still the same thing. You can choose six out of the nine for every um, role, basically. Three group perks are all familiar. It's Brothers in Arms, Repairs, and Concealment. Firefighting is our radio operator inv individual perk. Yes. Uh, if a crew member previously had more than six perks, has trained all six possible perks in the new system, special rules apply. Okay, what is this? Oh, wait, they're going to show us soon TM, I guess. With the new perk system, you cannot effectively obtain a seventh perk by equipping certain crew directives, like I said earlier, um, before you could do that in Crew 2.0, if I'm not mistaken. That is good that they changed it. Uh, for every vehicle, you can only use crew directors which amplify a perk that at least one of the vehicle's crew members possesses. Yes, it's basically make what you have better and not add what you don't have. Uh, please note that we intend to add two new directives, improve the practicality and sound detection perks. Respectively, duty comes first and increased focus directors will be phased out. I mean, that's that's nice. That is nice. Um, okay, six skills like we saw over here. Bonus perks for additional qualifications. So this is when your crew member has more than one role in the tank. Many crew members have additional qualifications in most cases. This applies to vehicles with a limited number of crew members. Uh, with the current perk system, this often puts extra pressure on the player. Who has to research more perks per crew member than usual? Yes, like the Manticore needs 18 skills or something crazy like that. Um, proposed perk system aims to solve this problem with bonus perks. Any crew member with one or more additional qualifications will passively train a chosen individual perk specific to the qualifications in question. As they train their chosen major qualification perks at 50% speed, no extra XP will be spent on training bonus perks. Maximum number is 3. Basically, um, okay, they're going to show you an example to hopefully make it more clear, right? A command of a T-57 heavy tank has radio operator as their additional qualification. There he is, right? This is not T-57 Heavy, but cool. Let's just imagine it is. So for every two fully trained perks, for their major qualification, their actual role as commander, uh, they will passively train one radio operator individual perk chosen by you. You cannot choose a group skill. If you want the group skills, they'll have to be in the major qualification and not as a bonus one. Need to see this. You can't um, train Brothers in Arms as your bonus perk. You can't tra train Repairs. You can't train Concealment as your bonus perks. You can only train those uh, specialized, role specific perks. With up to three perks in total. So if you have two skills, two perks in your major qualification, your main role, you can get one extra perk for free for the secondary qualification, the secondary role of your crew member. 
Uh, duplicate major qualifications. If two or more crew members have the same major qualifications. See the case of multiple loaders and some large vehicles with big guns, like the FE-45, which has two loaders. Every one of them must have the same individual perk. Individual means um, specialized, specific, qualification specific perks. Train to 100% for this perk to have 100% efficiency. So currently, uh, like intuition, if you train one of your loaders on the FE-45 to 100% on intuition, you get a 50% intuition um, trained to the FE-45 itself. If you have both of them trained 100%, you get 100%. So it's going to be like that for all other skills as well. One of the loaders in Yang Panzer E100 has intuition trained 100%. The other one has perfect charge trained 100%. Efficiency of each perk will be limited to 50% in each case until they both train the other perk as well, which will make it go up to 100%. As you can see over here, one of them has 100, one of them doesn't have it, it's 50. Both of them have 100, it is 100. Uh, duplicate secondary qualifications. Currently some vehicles have crew configurations where a crew member has a secondary qualification that someone else on this crew has as their major qualification. All multiple crew members have a secondary qualification that no one on this crew has as their major qualification. In the new perk system, for the absolute majority of such crews, only a single crew member will keep this qualification as their major qualification. Okay. So it, it, it won't be as it is right now, or the secondary qualification. Simply the system, simplify the system and make it more convenient without decreasing the effectiveness of the crews. Um, XP invested in the perks of crew members who lose the secondary qualification will be compensated for in the usual manner. I mean, it's, it's just going to make everything a lot more simple. So I really hope that is going to make new players like, learn the game a little easier. MX-50B currently has no designated loader, but three crew members have loader as their secondary qualification. Um, after the new perk system is implemented, only the gunner will keep loader as their secondary qualification. Instead of having three crew members have the same secondary qualification, only one is going to have it, so it'll make it more easier for you to know who does what in each vehicle. Um, our goal for the test is to assess how the new perks perform and work together. Therefore, all technical elements of the current crew perk system, such as the amount of crew XP required to train every successive perk, penalties for retraining crew members and changing their perks are staying the same. It should be like that all the time. Like, don't, don't go technical on me. This is how it should be. Don't try to change the amount of XP that we need. No. Keep it like this. Please and thank you. Um, only difference is that the perks reset operation now also resets to zero perks. Yes, just just keep it like this. This is good. Keep calm, carry on. Um, fate of super experienced crew members. So if you have those 18 skill crews, if you have 8, 9, 10 skill crews, let's see what you will be getting. Uh, proposed perk system limits the number of major qualifications perks by 6. Once it is applied for every crew member that has more than 6 perks, you'll be compensated by... Uh, the crew over the cap in crew books of the same nation. I was hoping for a universal guide once again. Um, but, I mean, if you have an 8 skill crew, I think you can basically train with the compensation that you get a new 6 skill crew, which is, which is kind of crazy. If it is given with the exact amounts of XP, right? Uh, crew members that have six major qualifications perks fully trained will continue to accumulate crew XP. This extra crew XP will transform into universal guys like we saw earlier. Once you reach the six scale perk, um, every hundred thousand, which is got two hundred thousand base XP, right? It's fifty percent of the base XP. Um, so once you reach two hundred thousand base XP, you will be getting a universal guide which is worth a hundred thousand crew XP for basically any vehicle that you would like. There's no limit to that, so you can do that again and again and again. If you want to play the same vehicle for um, 100,000 battles and just get unlimited crew books, be my guest, enjoy life, that is there for you. Uh, besides helping you train your novice crews, this feature is quite realistic. Ace groomers become so adept at armored combat that they end up writing memoirs and treatises, whatever those are. Um, for crew members with six perks fully trained and any additional qualifications, we'll get the same amount of crew XP compensation as for those who only have a major qualification. 
which is assigned three bonus bags to them for each additional qualification. Um, so, I mean, when you have six perks, you get bonus qualifications. This is just, I mean, I love this. I love this very much. Why do we need a reworked perk system? We don't really, but it's good, so it's fine, I guess. Uh, Planning to introduce an improved perk system to bring back meaningful choice. Proposed system with a six perk cap for every crew member encourages you to select perks based on your personal playstyle and promotes experimentation with multiple setups in the current system. The role of choice is diminished, as it's often possible to research every possible perk. Like I said earlier, um, instead of just grinding through all of the different perks, you will actually have to make choices. Bridge the skill gap. This is a big one. World of Tanks has been around for well over a decade. Lots of tankers with tremendous battle experience and outstanding playing skills. Under the current system, crews with all perks researched give our veterans an extra advantage over the newcomers. I believe there still should be an advantage over the newcomers, but if it's six skills compared to like a three of a newcomer, I, I feel that is fine as well. Um, instead of 18 versus three skills or something. So I don't really mind that one, and as long as the veteran players do get compensated very nicely, and it does seem like they're getting compensated very nicely, I don't think there's any reason uh, not to like this. Balance the scales. New systems are to both small and large crews, also more structured in general, with an equal number of possible perks for every major qualification. Makes it easier. If you have a lot of crew members, if you have a small amount of crew members, it makes it easier for everyone to know exactly which skills and perks they want and everything, and it's going to make it more fair, like they said, between all types of vehicles. Um, okay, who can participate in the test? Anyone! Any player can sign up. We'll choose the participants randomly among the, the applicants. Our goal is to form a substantial player pool that is representative of our audience which is large and diverse regarding use of service, skill level, demographics, parameters, ETC. Um, if you're chosen for testing, we'll receive an email invitation down to the test game client from a special time in the Wargaming Net Game Center that will become available for you. I'll be provided with a test account with enough resources to, to experiment with various perk setups as much as you wish. If you don't get an invitation, be sure to follow our news coverage. During the test, uh, you'll be able to use the mass perk fill reset system. Lovely stuff, once again, very good quality of life things. Uh, to fill all untrained perks or reset all perks for every crew member, you should not be doing the fill system. I think you should be doing uh, like the filling personally. Do that every crew member separately instead of just making a press a button and it chooses for you. Uh, may I have to modify some choices manually to optimize a set of characters' perks for their vehicle. Yes, that's why you should do everything manually. Participants of the test will be free to share info on the reworked perk system and their impressions with no limitations. Lovely. What are the next steps? Coming test aims to prove that the new perk system is well balanced. Uh, most of the changes should make their way into the main game later this year. Okay, so it's still planned um, for this year. Once the new system is implemented, expect a grace period. This is what we need. Starting from your first login date, have that change. During this period, you can reselect any crew member's perks including the zero ones and unlimited number of times for free. Also, the first perk reset operation after the end of the grace period will be free for every crew member. This is being so like, if you can't log in during the probably like 30 days, that's what they showed in the, uh, in the video of the grace period, you will still be able to reset every one of your crew members once for free. So like, even if it's a year after the grace period ends and you haven't logged in, you will be able to still um, reset your crew members just once instead of an unlimited time like you can do in the grace period, which is lovely. Until the end of the grace period, you will be able to assign the reset perks automatically for crew members on your account. If left unmodified at the end of the grace period, the crew members will keep these perks. Okay. Mass perk fill reset system. Uh, reset system will allow you to fill in all unassigned perks. Reset all perks. Use the reset and then assign everything manually. I think that's the best way to do it. Instead of letting the game decide uh, which skills and perks for you. Compensation of crew XP. Access with six perk for every crew member. Currently we're planning compensation in crew books of respective nations. I think if they actually gave universal guides instead of um, specific nations, it might be better. But even if it's the same nation, I think that's fine. 
Uh, but yeah, I would definitely love to see a universal, right? Steady supply of universal guys. Crime is worth all six possible perks for the train. Accumulate extra crew XP. Once you reach um, 100,000 of the crew specific XP, which is 200,000 base XP, you'll be able to get um, a universal guide, which is worth 100,000 XP for every crew member in one vehicle. Um, effects of all perks shown in vehicle comparison the garage. Wait, what is this? Effects of all perks shown in vehicle comparison. That's, I guess. Okay, rather than those of select perks. It's just basically everything in the comparison. Uh, new crew perks isn't as much to offer. Sign up for the test and get to grips with it in advance. Um, yeah, do it, people. I will be leaving the links in the description down below for both this lovely article and the video we saw earlier. But overall, I think this is very good, very well made. Pretty much made everything I hated about Crew 2.0 last year. They threw that out of the window and made it new, made it fresh. And hopefully that'll make the game a bit new, a bit fresh, right? Make some more variety in the skills everyone is taking. The biggest issue is, will it still have a meta, right? Like, it's six skills out of nine. So there, there's most likely going to be some sort of meta like, oh, you're playing a heavy tank without an emergency? What are you doing, you noob? Stuff like that. So hopefully they're going to be very well balanced so that there won't be any perk metas in the game. Also, some clarification on the emergency skill would be lovely. I didn't like the ammo tuning, but that's why we have testing. That's exactly why the new sandbox test server is here for us. Overall, lovely stuff. I mean, it just makes a system that is rather difficult to understand as a new player. It makes it very easy to understand, in my opinion at least. Very clear what you get. And now that you actually see the stats on the side, it's just, it's delightful stuff. I love this. I love the change. Um, a few tweaks here and there just to make it more balanced, but overall... Good job, Wargaming. I mean, credit where credit is due, right? Um, but yeah, I guess this is it for this video. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of the new crew perk system, Crew 2.0, Crew.0? Um, do you like the new changes? Do you actually prefer the old version? Do you think that the veteran players are getting freaked a bit over here because all of their big 8, 9, 10 skill crews are going to be nerfed? ish or do you think it's a good change make the uh the more casual players the newer players a bit more competitive make it easier for them to understand the game also uh i mean is this really what we needed inside the game personally i think the biggest issue inside the game currently is not the crew perk system it's the matchmaking um and some sort of skill-based matchmaking i'm not saying put one 10,000 water rating player against another but like the average of both teams, just start by averaging, right? The what rating, the win rate, something on both teams, make it a bit more closer to hopefully make those 15 to 5 or less battles uh, less frequent. But overall, very decent changes. I really like this new crew system. With a few tweaks, with a few changes, I think it's going to be absolutely perfect. But yeah, let me know your thoughts, your opinions in the comments down below. And as usual, Thank you so much everyone for watching. You're awesome. Stay awesome. Stay safe. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. Tell us people have a good one.